Welcome, Boilermaker families, to another virtual Parent and Family event hosted by Parent and Family Connections. My name is Jen Wetley, and I have the honor of serving as the Associate Director for Parent and Family Connections. Today's event will be focused on various opportunities for students to get involved on Purdue's campus. With the start of the new semester and students getting settled into their new routine, now it's a great time for them to be looking at opportunities and how to get involved in different areas on campus. Tonight's virtual event will host will highlight all of the steps to leaps pillars, which you'll hear which you will learn more about here shortly from Stephanie. Along with learning more about steps to leaps, today we will hear from the areas of students' activities and organizations, residence hall association, student employment, undergraduate research, and the Purdue alumni student experience. To start us off today, we will hear more about steps to leaps from Stephanie. Hi, thanks, Jen. So I'm excited to be with you all today to talk a little bit about Steps to Leaps and really how this was created to benefit your students and to help them to engage in their learning and really who they are and how they interact with the Purdue campus. So um, almost five years ago now, the Steps to Leaps initiative was launched um, as a collection of faculty and staff and students that came together to think about and talk about what it meant to fully engage in the Purdue experience and what it was that our students needed to be their most successful selves at Purdue. Um, we have lots of resources that are available. We have a lot of things that can be challenging for our students. And so what is it that our students needed to best navigate those things? And so our students were um, part of the part of a solution to that problem. Um, and so we have five pillars uh, that Jen mentioned, and so I'll go over those and then talk a little bit of how some of those things come to pass on campus. And then also you'll hear from a number of my colleagues tonight about the work that they're doing and ways that your students can get involved um, in a variety of ways across campus. So the first pillar and really kind of the foundation of the Steps to Leaps program is well-being. And when we talk about well-being, we're not just talking about physical well-being, we're talking about well-being in terms of emotional and physical and mental um, and kind of spiritual, financial well-being, kind of all of those different dimensions of well-being. Um, and we have a variety of different resources on campus that help our students to engage in kind of what well-being means to them. Um, and we really help uh, and hope that our students are going to find and define that for themselves while they're in college because we know that that foundation is really critical to their success beyond college. We want them to establish those habits um, and those healthy behaviors that are gonna carry them through to and continue through their adulthood. The second uh, pillar is leadership. And so I myself uh, serve as the director of our Roger C. Stewart Leadership and Professional Development Department here on campus. And so part of what our department does is help our students, regardless of their major, we want them to connect with their inner leadership potential. We believe that leadership doesn't exist just at the top of an organization, that leadership is within any part of an organization or community. And so our leadership pillar as Steps and Steps to Leaps is really um, helping our students to understand, first off, that really strong tradition of leadership across the Boilermaker tradition and experience and history at Purdue, and then also helping them to really learn and leverage what is it that they bring to the table when it comes to leadership and what is it that they can help to enhance within their profession um, or within their communities as they are here on campus, but again, after they leave our campus. The third pillar is impact. Um, when we talk to our students, they often will tell us that part of what, you know, drew them to Purdue is that they wanted to be able to launch their um, life into an opportunity to really make an impact and leave a legacy. Um, here at Purdue, you don't really have to go very far to see um, the impact that some of our uh, notable alumni have made. So people like Amelia Earhart or Neil Armstrong. I mean, even this program is kind of um, named after uh, one of our most noteworthy alumni, um, Neil Armstrong. And so when you think about that, we also want our students to realize that 
it doesn't always have to be the giant things that happen. It's the smaller things that you do every day and the small impacts and the small decisions that you make that make an impact on the world around you. And so thinking of impact as not just the large things, but also the small things that happen from day to day. The fourth um, pillar is networks. And so networks is often our students think of it as networking and professional networking and shaking hands and getting to know, collecting business cards. And with us, networks is really a lot more than that. So networks is not just the professional connections, but really who are the people within your network that provide the support that you need to be your best self? Who are the people that you know you can go to when you're experiencing something that's challenging, when you're celebrating something that's been really wonderful? For many of them, it's going to be you. Obviously, you're engaged in your student if you're attending tonight's event. Um, and so it's the people that they love and um, have in their families. It's the friends that they make. It's the professors that they meet. Um, the, the staff that they connect with across campus and in the, work, in the work that they're doing. And so who are those people that they can go to and that they can tap into? Who are the people that are going to help them to be their best self as they continue to do the work that they're doing at Purdue and beyond? And then finally, our last um, pillar is grit or persistence. And so when we talk about that, we're talking about what is that um, innate ability to continue and to keep moving forward when you have really come into something that's really a difficult thing to encounter. So you've failed at something or you've approached something that's just been a lot harder than you thought it was going to be. Um, for a lot of our really high academically achieving students, Purdue may be the first time that they've encountered a difficult academic experience. They've just kind of worked easily through their academics. And so um, when they get here and kind of encounter maybe their first B or maybe their first failing grade on a test, um, we want them to understand what it may be to kind of continue to move through that. And what is it that helps them to continue to move? And likewise, what are all of the things that are just out there in the world that they're going to encounter that are going to make things a little bit more difficult for them? And so we want them to continue to be able to take uh, take inventory of what's happening, tap into taking care of themselves, taking the time that they need, and then figuring out what is it they need to kind of get back up and to be able to move forward either on that path or maybe finding a different path for themselves so that they can continue to move forward. So all of those things, those five different pillars, come together to create our Steps to Leaps program. And so Steps to Leaps is really not just one single thing. It's a collection of all of these different experiences that come across campus um, and different ways that students can engage with kind of the understanding and philosophy of this idea in the work that they're doing for campus. Um, so today you're going to hear, as Jen mentioned, from a variety of different places and ways that students can be involved on campus. And so that obviously taps into a number of different things here. We know that involvement helps our students to develop leadership skills. It does great things for their well-being. It's obviously going to help them to create a network of people on campus. It's also going to help them to leave an impact and legacy here across campus. And it's going to help them in that grit and persistence as they find themselves in difficulties and challenges. Our involvement across campus gives them opportunities to kind of um, practice and, and stretch those muscles of what it means to kind of encounter those difficulties and move forward. So our next speaker is going to be Dr. Martia Bronner King, who serves as our Director of Student Activities and Organizations. And so I will go ahead and pass it to Martia. Thank you, Stephanie. I really appreciate it. Um, I am happy to join everyone this evening to talk about student activities and organizations. Our office is twofold. Um, we look at a couple of things. So one of the major things we look at is how to get student or students involved in organizations. And the other piece is how to oversee our over 900 student organizations on campus. So we're about 90, 986. So there's always something to connect with and something to network with someone to network with and something to belong to. 
So I want to talk about joining a student organization. So we have, uh, typically we do two fairs um, at the start of each semester, uh, one fair um, each semester for a student to just come and check out. The spring fair uh, is a little, a little smaller and we target our first year or transfer students to come to that fair uh, so they can have a opportunity they figured out what college life is like they have eased into they understand where studying is and when time to eat and all those things um, and so now it's time to join right they have figured it out i can go and join a student organization and so we just had our fair uh, on the 14th of january um, first week of school, I believe that was, and had a couple thousand students come out and we were excited to welcome them. That does not say that now it's over. Um, that is an, uh, that's the, kind of the first opportunity. We also do one-on-one drop-ins and advising to students. They may not have figured out where they want to go and what they want to do and how can they get involved. And we have staff on hand that can assist with that. Um, one of the, the things I love to say, because people don't, where do I start? I don't know what club to join, what's the right one? Um, I, I focus on three, right? Three opportunities. Um, get involved where you live. Um, and next, we'll have, uh, when, I'm, when I'm done, I'll transition to Krista Pazera, who will talk about the living spaces and opportunities for students to get involved where they live. Get involved where you live. Get involved in your major. Um, by being involved in your major, you are able to, to tap into additional networks and connections with industry, um, opportunities for internship, to understand if that is the right major for you, right? Like that, like, oh, that's what this is. I don't like it, right? And so that's a, a easy way to understand where you fall and uh, fall in line and if this is something you want to do. So get involved where you live, get involved in your major and get involved in something you're passionate about. Um, and, <laughs> With over 900 clubs and organizations, we have a lot of different passions. Um, anything from cryptocurrency and power lifting to the bass fishing club, the baking club, um, humans versus zombies, which is a group of students who uh, who try to turn, the human tries to turn into the zombie and, and vice versa with a Nerf gun um, or socks. And you might say, hey, you had me at major. You might have had me even at living situation. But Marti, all that fun you're talking about, I don't know. Well, uh, Stephanie talked about well-being, right? Um, college is hard. Um, it you you I don't hardly remember what that time was like, um, but I know what my students deal with on a day to day, right? Um, the classes is hard, the rigor is hard, um, friendships can be hard, roommates can be hard, significant others can be hard, um, and they just need the mental break, right? Um, and so that's what this looks like on a college campus. It, this is their this is their group, this is their people. These are those that they surround themselves that are like them. So we are excited for students to get involved in what they're passionate about. Um, sometimes it's animals. Uh, so there are lots of opportunities that way. Um, I do want to note our, our website, um, you can Google Boiler Link and you will see the website. And so when the student says, there's nothing to do on this campus. Please let me let me tell you, there is lots to do. Um, it's just about finding their people. And if they can't, it, it, they don't have the, it's too much, I don't wanna do it. It's not, you know, um, it's not in my wheelhouse. I'm not tech savvy. We can assist with that piece. We do have a mobile app version, um, C-O-R-Q, Cork, that students can download and go from there and be able to, to it's a, uh, mobile version to the board link and they can go on there and search organizations. They can search events happening this week, this weekend, um, lots of fun things to do. So with over 980 clubs, we do have lots of events and activities that happen on campus. Um, and we've are, I've been here a while now. We've gone far away from the, um, we used to have flyers taped on the sidewalks. It was an eyesore. Um, so we've gone away from that in the digital age on the Cork app. You can see all the events that are going on. Uh, we also have um, so one of the groups that I want to, to recognize is Purdue Student Union Board. Um, they have events that are free, open to campus for students that they can just pop in and pop out. And they range anything from uh, um, 
candle making. I know it sounds weird, but you know, students like to do craft items. Uh, candle making all the way up to concerts. Uh, so in, anything in between. Um, almost every weekend there is a free movie uh, for students to, to go and see. Right? Uh, so there is availability for students to get involved. Um, we really want students to build their experience. And what does building their own Boilermaker experience look like? And it could be involved in an internship, could be involved in a student organization, but something outside the classroom that allows them to take what they learn in the classroom and apply it. A lot of our student organizations uh, getting involved, they have opportunities to manage funds, they have opportunities to put on events, to have some project management, to have some thought um, behind things. Our students are, um, they have big ideas and big events. So that other part of the arm that we hold, we help students kind of live their mission and live out those events. Uh, I've seen, if you're familiar with the Engineering Student Council, they put on the largest student-run career fair in the country um, right on our campus. We have multiple hackathons on campus uh, that students uh, put on and gain support from uh, vendors and people in that industry. We have competitions, dance competitions. We have a swing dance competition, uh, a um, Bhangra Indian style dance competition. So we, our students do a lot of things, um, invite people to campus, live their mission, and we want to help them do that. And we take care of, because you're just like, ooh, what, what are the students doing? Um, that sounds a little dangerous. We do take care of that oversight as well as making sure that they are able to uh, facilitate the event in a safe, um, a safe way. Um, that whether it's physical safety or financial safe, safety. So we want, if you have any concern, if you are, my uh, student is not involved, does not know where to start, you can send them our way. You can email me directly, uh, email our office directly and say, hey, I watched a video, saw a lady on there. She says, they'll help my student get involved. I will. Uh, this is something that I've offered every year uh, to every parent and every year someone someone follows me up and says, you said you would help and I'm here to help. And I've connected with some great students and I never say that the parents sent me. So if you're worried about that, um, the secret is safe with me. So I want your student um, to not only graduate from Purdue University and they're more likely to graduate when they're involved. I want them to graduate, but I want them to have a great experience while they're here. I want them to connect and have friends. And whether they are um, two years old, going to kindergarten or preschool, um, or they're 20 years old on a college campus, we want our students to be happy. We want them to be involved. We want them to make friends and, and build those lifelong lasting relationships, right? Um, and we are here to help them do so. I work very well um, with all the colleagues on this call. Um, Stephanie, we are down the hall from each other and often connect, right? And so if there's a student that I can help or a student she can help, uh, we're right there with them. But I would like to take a time um, to introduce the next speaker, uh, Krista Pazera, who is over housing, um, and we'll talk about RHA and other housing related items. So welcome, Krista. Thank you, Dr. Bronner King. Uh, as she said, my name is Krista Pizarra and I get to be the Director of Residential Life. Um, and so I work under University Residences Housing, uh, Dining and Culinary and I'm going to focus on the um, organizations or the student leadership opportunities within our area. And so the, of those over 900 uh, that Dr. Bronner King mentioned, uh, we've got about 24, 25 student organizations in our space. And we start off with Residence Hall Association because they are the overarching student organization, the primary student governing body uh, for those students living in university residences. And of course, as we've got on the screen here, they focus on advocacy, programming, and leadership development. Another departmental-wide organization uh, is National Residence Hall Honorary. And if you think back um, to student opportunities in high school, um, the idea of National Honor Society recognizes the top 1% of our student leaders on campus, living with us on campus. They focus on recognition, of course, service, uh, service projects, 
um, for their one of their core opportunities and then leadership development. And finally on this screen, uh, this slide, we've got University Residence is Global, you are global. It's geared toward first year students who live with us in University Residences, um, who identify as international, um, and then focus with their experience on acclimating to the Purdue culture, programming and community development. And the pictures that we've got there are pictures of Residence Hall Association Day, um, a trip um, to one of our Indiana State Parks, and then an event that UR Global hosted over in the Honors College last year. I just wanted to point those out. So next slide. And so although um, some of my work is with learning communities, with the over 350 um, resident assistants, these student organizations provide that opportunity for students to connect with each other and contribute back to their own community. Um, University Residences Multicultural Connections is a group that's geared toward first year um, domestic minority students, focusing on community development, of course, connection and programming. One of the events they were able to host um, this last semester was the idea of a study time to connect um, and be able to help people focus for the um, fall semester finals time and have some snacks and, and some study help during that time. Additionally, our student organizations individually in each building are called hall clubs or building clubs, and they each are ho um, led by a student president. And so with each of those presidents, they come to an, uh, a larger meeting called President's Roundtable, where they get to collaborate with each other. They get to focus on their own individual leadership development and provide input on questions we may have as directors for them um, regarding changes and uh, renovations, changes to processes, maybe even meal plans, dining plans, opportunities that we can provide for student leaders. We take the time to get that feedback from them. And then the hall clubs that those presidents lead focus primarily on community development and programming within their individual buildings. So for Earhart Club, they would have the Itasca Club. At Hillenbrand Hall, they would have the Phoenix Club, that type of thing. Uh, then we've got additional leadership opportunities in the student staff positions of the resident assistant or the resident education assistant. And we are fortunate to be able to employ, employ over 330 students in these roles. We're really pretty close to 350 these days. Um, and they um, are students who live in and around residents on the floor, in the apartment areas. And not only do they provide opportunities to connect socially, but they act as a resource serve in duty rotations, and they do get training through um, the fall and January timeframes um, to train themselves to have the skills to be able to support students, but then also develop themselves and learn about how to better serve their communities. And you can see there, there's a picture of August training um, where we had the resident education assistants in the, interacting with some of our professional staff over in Meredith South in the lounge there. I can have the next slide, please. So um, additional leadership opportunities that our students get um, outside of paid positions, but these leadership elected and appointed roles. Of course, we have training for our presidents in the fall and then throughout the year. We offer the opportunity for student leaders to participate in the Jay Severson Student Leadership Retreat. This last time was held at Fair Oak Farms. We've brought alumni back to talk with them about how their student uh, their living experience and their student leadership experiences, either as club members, student office workers, dining um, members, dining student employees, how they impacted their jobs and how they were their jobs impacted their opportunities to be successful as professionals and beyond their on-campus Boilermaker experience. We also have the opportunities to help support the pillar of well-being um, in our men's and women's leadership program where alumni and um, mentors, staff and faculty come and meet with students throughout the semesters and talk with them. Um, one semester, we were able to look at the well-being book and talk with them about how they are utilizing these tenants in the work that they do and in their general life. And so kind of caring adults coming back and talking to new and um, growing adults about how they're using their opportunities off campus and on campus to help them be successful. 
Also, Residence Hall Association works to try and advocate for student needs. Um, they've been supportive of various uh, initiatives on campus, including um, one that's very near and dear to their hearts, which is mental health and supporting mental health resources for students. One great opportunity that our student leaders had this um, last spring and then, of course, this fall um, spring leadership conference. But I wanted to highlight the GLACUR, um, Great Lakes Affiliate of College and University Residence Hall's participation. They were actually able to go, um, won awards regarding their organization, and also our president of RHA was able to get president of the year. And so those opportunities to connect with students on other campuses and with each other help them grow their themselves and our student leaders on this campus. Next slide, please. Um, finally, uh, to highlight here, impact um, and perseverance, the last steps to leaps um, pieces um, that, that I have here to, to speak about, and then we'll turn it over to talk about student employment. Um, the idea of the National, National Hall Honorary, um, they are one of their founding tenets is service. And so what they were able to do in their last, um, I believe that's a picture there of creating blankets for local pet shelters, uh, being able to give back to the community in that way. And so they were able to participate in the Student Leadership Conference and create those items. And that's just one example of what they've been able to do to give back to the larger community. And then uh, the final uh, pillar there from Steps to Leaps that we're able to support um, is perseverance. And all of our student groups, um, they do have an ongoing relationship with their advisor. And that's a professional staff member um, that they're able to connect with on a weekly basis, either in one-on-one -on -one or in small or large group settings. And I apologize for the siren here in the background of in my office. Um, and also their ability to be able to grow in the position. Um, they have event reflection. What did they learn? How did they participate? What went well? What could be better? And think about how that can apply to what they do in the day-to-day -day of their work. And then also after they leave Purdue's campus and how they can reflect on how they, be, they can be successful moving on in their careers and just their lives in general. And then finally, I wanted to highlight um, our new RA staff, our resident assistant uh, members go through an eight week course over the, uh, the fall semester when they arrive. And they focus on reflection there, but also kind of a little more in-depth training um, over what uh, in what we went over and the first two weeks of summer training so they can hopefully be successful, more successful in the role as RAs and better support their students in their communities. And so I wanted to thank you for your time today and then pass off uh, the baton to Allie Goodrich so she can speak to y'all about student employment. Allie. Thanks, Krista. You guys have so much great information and I don't have uh, as many slides or things to put on the screen, but I have some good information. Uh, as Krista mentioned, Allie Goodrich, I am part of student life operations and oversee project management, student employment, and a number of other initiatives. Uh, pushing 22, 23 years here at Purdue, and I've always been a part of our student life division. I wanna speak a little bit today about student employment. I think that it's very apparent, students don't come to Purdue because they wanna get a job. They come to Purdue for a great education and an experience. But I want you all to know as parents that there is a great balance in being able to come to school to do the academics that are needed for your student, but also to get a job. We employ in student life over 2,000 student workers in a variety of operational areas. We have uh, position opportunities in our Purdue Dining and Culinary, residence halls, Hall of Music Productions, Recreation and Wellness, Office of Dean of Students, the Student Activities and Organizations Office, the list does go on and on. And what people don't often realize is that working on campus has statistically been showing us semester over semester that students who work in student life achieve a higher GPA than students who don't. And we find that we can tie our pillars from steps to leaps into our jobs. Companies come and recruit our students on an annual basis for the positions that they want to achieve when they leave Purdue. We wanna provide those skills to them while they're here at Purdue. So if you think about well-being, leadership, impact, network, and perseverance and grit, 
our students will find those skills and work towards gaining that knowledge that they can then apply to their resume and to their life as they move forward in their adult roles. Student jobs on our campus are incredibly flexible. We obviously know that our students are here first and foremost for their education, but we are able to work around their class schedules. We offer opportunities for two or three or four hour shifts. And we already know because we've studied it that the balance between your coursework, your study time and your work life needs to fit well in the parameters of a student. So typically that sweet spot for working in one of our areas on student life's air division is about eight or 10 hours a week. That's really the sweet spot. Like I said, we know that our GPAs are higher. We review those every semester and we work towards providing that data as a way to, to show, hey, if you work with us, you're going to achieve but you're gonna build friendships and you're going to have camaraderie and connections that may carry on with you for the duration of your academic year and beyond. We also offer opportunities for every student to receive a performance evaluation. And depending on how they perform, they may be eligible then for a merit increase. So they are starting to experience what happens in our real world outside of you know when you're here studying for school. I think that what is also really important, and I, I don't know if we have a slide on this, but I think it's important that students and parents know how to apply for a job. If you don't currently work at Purdue, you're able to just Google search Purdue Student Employment. It'll take you to our website that I oversee, and there is a slide for that in a picture. You can see it at the top, purdue.edu slash student employee employment. All a student needs to do is click on that black box on the right that says job postings. They can apply two ways. If your student already works for us, they will apply through our internal system called Success Factors. If they don't work for us, but they want to find a job with us, then there's a link that says click here and it takes them to the career page. One last thing that I think is really valuable for parents and families to know Every position within the Division of Student Life is eligible for work study. So if your student qualifies for work study, when they apply, it's a click of a button and all of that process is through on the back end. We offer opportunities for our domestic students as well as international students. And we have a tremendous resource of people on the back side of things in our business office to help us get people onboarded. Every one of those opportunities is out there waiting. If your student does not know how to find a job, wants some information, they can also click the Contact Us button, which is here on the screen. That sends an email to the student employment mailbox, and I'm the one that personally receives it. So I can reach out, I can connect with your student and help them to locate the best job that fits for them and go through that process of getting some good work experience while they're here on campus. So that's a lot about student employment in a nutshell. I want to pass on the next presenter, which is JJ Sadler, and he's going to speak to you about his area and how he works with our students. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Allie. Um, sorry, there's construction going on in, in Hicks Undergraduate Library. So if you haven't been on campus lately, uh, there, there's some moving and, and shaking that, that's going on. So the LGBTQ Center just uh, got, got placed. Uh, and replace the Undergrads Cafe. So they're they're finishing up some uh, some work here. But uh, today, uh, I, I'd like to present a little bit about the Office of Undergraduate Research, uh, what we do, what we offer to students, uh, but also give you some tips on, on some nudges or, or ways that you can help engage your students in undergraduate research. So I'm uh, the, the Associate Director uh, that focuses on students. And so in my role, I work with students that come to us that have questions, uh, with things such as how do I get started in research or I have a research uh, project idea, how do I connect with a faculty member, uh, or I've been conducting research, how can I go to other universities, how can I expand my research uh, opportunities, how can I present it, uh, or I'm having issues. How do I uh, work with my mentor or how do I move to a different lab? And so our mission and purpose is really to help expand undergraduate research opportunities uh, as much as we can through expert research mentors. 
And so next slide, please. For, uh, for undergraduate research, uh, the, the definition that, that our overarching association uses, the Council on Undergraduate Research, is it's a mentored investigation or creative inquiry conducted by undergraduates that seek to make a scholarly or artistic contribution to knowledge. And what I really want to emphasize is that we may have ideas of what research looks like because of marketing. Uh, it, it is very common for students to say, I want to get involved in this, but I don't think what I'm interested in is research. Because whenever we're looking at photos, there's a typical way that we think about how research can be perceived for the public to know that's research. And so sometimes our students may not realize that what they're doing is actually research. But if it is contributing to the scholarship of the discipline, it's something new. They're working with a faculty member and the faculty member is saying, this is research or you are expanding the discipline. We count that and, and, we, and we're, very, um, we're very intentional whenever we're thinking about that they're working with faculty. They're working with graduate students that are experts in their discipline. And so they're really learning how to, how to conduct uh, research in that field for many different applications, such as on, on the next slide, uh, it, it talks about different uh, reasons why you would want to conduct undergraduate research. And so uh, two, two uh, specific things. The first one is they get to know if this is the discipline that they really want to focus on. And so we try to encourage as much as possible uh, to get involved in research so that they're able to apply their knowledge from the course uh, courses that they're taking uh, and expanding that by including uh, some very important skills that employers are looking for, that graduate school programs are looking for, and professional programs. And the other kind of story that I like to say is in another, in a previous life, I used to work in a career center. And so I would work a lot with graduate school uh, program administrators and recruiters and then industry recruiters. And we would always ask them whenever they left the office uh, or whenever students would leave an interview, we would ask the employer, the graduate uh, representative, how did they do? And what we found is that um, those that had undergraduate research opportunities, they had, they had an interview that was memorable. They were able to talk about some very passionate projects. They were able to talk about skills that really set them apart uh, from other uh, candidates. And so it really does benefit their, their career trajectory from deciding if this is what they wanna do or if they need to make a change, uh, but then also in those tangibles during the interview. And so uh, for, for the number of undergraduate research opportunities uh, on the next slide, we, uh, we are able to track 2, at least 2,500 undergraduate researchers each year. That's important to emphasize because this is, we have identified a student with a faculty member on a particular project. Uh, we know that there are more projects out there. We just aren't able to put together all these pieces. Uh, but with this number, hopefully we're, we're able to highlight that these are found in college in every department in every discipline uh, at, at Purdue and so if uh, someone comes to me and say and says research really isn't for for my discipline or, or what I want to achieve uh, that's whenever I try to, to, to ask them why do you think that so uh, on the next couple slides we just have some screenshots of, of our website we try to include as much information uh, for, for students to get involved in undergraduate research, knowing that those that may want to get involved, usually they're involved in many other things. And so they may not be available during the day uh, to take advantage uh, of us whenever we're here uh, on campus. And so we try to include as many resources online about how to search, uh, how to be successful, how to apply, um, and, and how to present their, their research. And then on the next slide are, are just a few resources uh, that we have on our student uh, in, uh, student website. But on the right are some videos, very short videos that students can get involved in uh, right away uh, if they're thinking about research on what are some ways to get involved, but also what are some key areas that they need to be uh, interested in uh, or, or, or know before applying or looking for that research uh, experience. And so on the next slide, uh, th th this is some of those, those nuggets. Uh, so whenever thinking about undergraduate research, a lot of students say, I wanna get involved in research. They've heard that it's a good thing, uh, whether that's a great uh, uh, push from a relative or they've heard it from other friends that, that they're involved in research. 
but unfortunately it comes down to what are they interested in. We have many research disciplines, research topics that our faculty focus on, and it really boils down to what are they interested in, what do they want to get involved in, and then what characteristics meet their needs. Paid, unpaid, for credit, not for credit, at Purdue, somewhere else. Um, is it in a particular department? Uh, are they, do they need it for credit or not for credit? So, um, but then also thinking, does Purdue have these programs? And then are there professors? Are there researchers that share those interests and have opportunities? And then looking into what are those, those professors publishing? What kind of research do they conduct? And then applying uh, to, to some of those oppor opportunities. And then I am here to help throughout this process from starting with what are your research interests? Who can you connect with? All the way to applying with, with emails or resumes, personal statements, uh, interviews, appointments, and follow-up. Uh, but but this is kind of the, the flow that many students take, and this is whenever I work with them one-on-one -on -one, uh, in, in my coaching. This is typically the, the process that, that I uh, help them go through. So uh, one way that, that we recommend that students get involved in, in undergraduate research is through uh, attending our presentations. So on the next slide, uh, we, we emphasize that we have at least 800 uh, research presentations, but with the Fall Expo that, that just happened in, in November, I am happy to say that we are about to the thousand mark. So there are a thousand undergraduate research presentations that occur uh, each academic or each calendar year. And so these are great opportunities for students to present their work, uh, especially uh, to get practice if they're going to other conferences or to get practice to uh, presenting to individuals that may not be in their discipline. And so trying to, to bring down uh, the, the, the language of the vocabulary so that we can also understand them uh, maybe around the dinner table. But also these are great opportunities for students that if they wanna get involved in research, they know that if they go to these uh, conferences or these research uh, events, that they're able to talk to undergraduates. They're able to talk to their peers and talk about do you like this project? How did you get involved? Who are you working with? Can I get involved? These are great places uh, to, to make those networks, uh, but then also to ask individuals uh, how they got there. So on the next slide, these th this is just a summary of many services that, that, that we provide to students. Uh, some things that, that, that I just want to pull out real quick. So we do have a uh, seminar series that we host each uh, each semester, and so that's going on right now, ranging from getting started uh, to how to present your research, to how to market yourself for research or of your, your research opportunities. Um, we have graduate school-focused uh, seminars. We have uh, data-related uh, seminars, and so we, we try to host a variety of them. We also have our research roundtables, and so that's coming up very soon. It's very similar to a job fair, but it's focused on undergraduate research at Purdue. Uh, we also have uh, these one-on-one -on -one consultations that I talked about. That's through Boiler Connect. And so if your students say, I don't know how to connect with the Office of Undergraduate Research, it is literally the same process that they take to schedule with their advisor. They just schedule it with the Office of Undergraduate Research, and they'll meet with me. Uh, so they'll be able to see my calendar and make uh, make an appointment to talk about what are they thinking about. Uh, and uh, the other thing that I want to mention is that there is a student organization for those interested in uh, undergraduate research or those that are completing it called the Undergraduate Research Society of Purdue. And so they're able to get involved uh, with that where they talk about uh, professional development uh, activities, social activities, uh, but then also how to get started uh, in research. And so our last slide is just a how to stay in touch with the with the office. We have a newsletter uh, that, that sends out research opportunities that we know about, how to get started, all of our events. Um, and then we, we were on social where we try to promote uh, research opportunities that, that we know about or scholarships or grant funding uh, that, that, that's available. So with that, I would like to uh, pass the baton over to Jimmy from Pace.
Boiler up, hello, and a special boiler up to any alum uh, parents we have out there. As uh, was said, my name is Jimmy Cox, and I'm with the Purdue for Life Foundation, and I am specifically one of the advisors for our student alumni network called PACE Purdue Alumni Student Experience. And you might be thinking, why is the alumni office, the foundation wanting to engage with students? And it's simple. We, we feel like the Purdue experience in a lot of ways starts um, at birth. And uh, you, there are only students for four, uh, five, maybe six years if you're a pharmacy, um, but you're gonna be alums and uh, connected to Purdue for you know much longer than that. So um, PACE uh, started in 2005 and with the Steps to Leaps pillars, it really connects well with networks. Uh, we're the largest student organization on campus with over 7,000 members. And we connect students to alumni for uh, leadership, networking, and professional development opportunities. Uh, Purdue alumni, we number over 500,000 globally. And so there's a lot of alums out there because of a good advisor or mentor they had in their life. Uh, they want to connect back uh, with students. We also have a leadership opportunity as part of PACE. We have a board of directors made up of current students who help us advise the program and run some of the activities and events and let us know what we should be doing better with students and how to connect with them as alums too. Uh, PACE is a paid membership program. It's $125, but that covers our student from their, uh, for their entire undergraduate career. And a lot of that, um, it, it, we're a nonprofit, so it goes right back to the students. They get a jacket for signing up, a t-shirt and a pint glass every year they're a member, and then they get 10% off uh, textbooks and 15% off apparel and supplies at and so, yeah, it wouldn't be college without some awesome swag and discounts at stores. Um, but I also want to emphasize that that paid membership fee really gets you the swag and the discounts. Um, most of our events are open to all students on campus because we, we're here for all students and all alumni and all constituents. Um, and then, uh, excuse me, um, we also the leadership board that we have every year anybody any student can apply for that as well and that usually opens up in the fall so just some other things on there um, we have some events that we do uh, pretty consistently one is the mock career fair that takes place every september we also do a networking dinner uh, we do some professional photo opportunities uh, the mock career fair is a great opportunity before some of the major career fairs start on campus for your student to come and network with an alum or a business partner who can coach them on how to be successful at a real career fair. And so um, that's an opportunity for parents or alums or business partners to get involved as well. So if you'd like to get involved with that personally, or if you'd like to get your company involved, please uh, reach out to us. You see our website up there. Uh, you can also scan the QR code to go to, uh, directly to it. It not only has the PACE link in there, but it also has some other opportunities uh, that the foundation has for all students. So if we can go to the next slide. So PACE is part of the Purdue for Life Foundation and the foundation, it's the nonprofit arm of Purdue University. So we handle the alumni engagement and fundraising for Purdue University. We help those who love Purdue stay connected, get involved and give back. So not just students, just alums, but anybody who loves Purdue. And yes, that means you parents. Um, so as I said, there's several opportunities for students to connect and get involved. PACE is our largest one, but we also have what's called the Purdue Foundation Student Board. And so they, uh, the PFSB, they coach other students and other student organizations on the importance of fundraising at an institution like Purdue, and they can help student organizations with their um, own fundraising initiatives. We also have internship opportunities as well throughout the year, not just in, on the engagement team, which is the team I'm on, but we have internships on the data team, um, with our facilities folks, so uh, special events team, so several different um, internship opportunities that are paid. We also have what's called the Purdue Ties platform. It's a networking and mentoring platform for all of Purdue. So picture LinkedIn, except just for uh, those who love Purdue. You can go to purdueties.com. Uh, you and your student can sign up and begin networking with over 11,000 uh, Purdue Boilermakers on there. And then also, this is a great time of year that we love to promote this opportunity, our Alumni Clubs Scholarship Program. The foundation, we have about 60 to 70 alumni clubs in the United States. 
uh, we have um, most of those clubs give out scholarships. So if you scan that QR code, you can go and see the Indiana clubs and then the clubs outside of Indiana that have a scholarship program. And they differ a, a little bit depending on the club. Some give out scholarships to uh, only new students, some to only returning, but there are some that give out scholarships to both. Um, and so it's a great opportunity to uh, get connected with your local club, but also apply for a scholarship and hopefully get some of your students' college uh, opportunity paid for. Um, but as I mentioned, uh, we do a lot of events throughout the year. And if a student is a member of PACE, they will get notified by email or maybe text message or our social media channels about when and where those uh, opportunities take place. Purdue Ties, they can uh, log on anytime. And then I'm really proud because it's a partnership with some of the other colleagues um, on this call. A shout out to Dr. Uh, Bronner King. We have a photo booth now in the Welcome Center, specifically Stewart Center 102. So if your student is in need of a professional headshot for uh, their social media accounts or maybe for a port, uh, portfolio or a website, they can come in any day, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, to access our photo booth. It takes less than five minutes and they can get a professional headshot that gets sent to them uh, via email and they can use some of the features on it. Um, it uh, adheres to skin tone. Uh, there's uh, blemish removers, teeth whitening, stuff like that. So it's a great, um, a great new resource. We're happy to uh, provide some uh, to students. So please let them know to come and check it out. And uh, Pace and the foundation, we hope to see uh, you and your student around campus or at some of the events we host uh, at Purdue or around the country. So boiler up, hammer down and hail Purdue. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for all of that wealth of information. We do have a few questions um, that were sent in from our family. So we're going to go ahead and get to those real quick before we close up for today. Um, I'm going to bring in Martia and Krista. And um, Martia kind of touched about this about um, for new students and transfer students. But is there a way for um, other students students to get involved in clubs and organizations? Are there smaller events um, that are typically held um, throughout the spring semester um, like there, there are in the fall? So what I would say, each individual student organization has what is called a call out. Um, and those call outs are the smaller or smaller events. So um, we, in the spring semester, we don't typically put those, the smaller events on. During the fall, we may have some tabling events um, throughout the first couple of weeks of school. In the spring semester, we allow student organizations to kind of, um, those that are open for membership, because everyone's membership is different, those that are open for membership, they are able to have what is called a call out or interest meeting, or they are able to table so students can come and visit them. Um, and kind of it's this introductory meeting. So, hi, I am this club and this is what I'm about. And the student can figure out if they are interested or not. So we don't have anything that is structured um, from our office, but student groups use um, usually around the first month of school um, to have call out meetings. And there is the opportunity, if you see something you like, to just reach out to the student organization. So on Boiler Link, there is the contact for the student org president, as well as the advisor to say, hey, I'm interested in this club. I may have missed the call out. Is there an opportunity for me to come and connect with the club? Um, some have applications and those things and, and some do not. Wonderful. So Krista, on the for the residence hall in the hall clubs, are there opportunities for students to get involved now or is that primarily in the fall? Yeah, actually, um, we throughout the semester sometimes have vacancies in the student organization um, executive leadership board roles. And so there could very well be uh, vacancies right now. Of course, there's events that are always happening and being hosted by the student organizations in, in university residences. And right now, actually, in the last several years, it's actually taken us till about the spring for the student organization to really get up and running and to be offering those opportunities for students to get involved. I would also encourage students who are going to be living with us next year in university residences to go ahead and watch for those elections that will be coming up to get people elected to the student organizations 
for next semester uh, to be up and running running in the fall of 2023. And so that's something that students can look for right now to be ready for the fall semester. And then of course, we've got events that are happening all throughout the spring semester in university residences, individual by building. And then of course, RHA, Residence Hall Association will be hosting things. They're actually even helping to co-sponsor a Lunar New Year event uh, this this week um, that's campus-wide. And so there's, there's always something happening and always an opportunity for students to be involved either as a leader or just a participant. Thank you so much, Krista. The next question I have, um, I'm gonna start with, um, with Jimmy and then I'll go to JJ. Um, are there good places for students to go now um, to find a summer job or internship or connect with um, folks who may have these opportunities um, outside of the CCO through your area? In about another month, I'll have a posting for our uh, student engagement service interns out of the Welcome Center. And so we uh, we still operate over the summer out of the Welcome Center and need students to help man our front desk. Um, but I would absolutely recommend getting on Purdue Ties and creating an account. Uh, there's a free jobs board on there that the university uh, uses as well as the foundation. And then alumni use that as well uh, for internships and job openings. So um, if you're a, a current student uh, still finishing up, uh, their timing in an internship, I would look at that. And even some that don't post, um, you can message anyone on the platform. So if you see an alum and um, you know are interested in his or her career paths, I would uh, reach out to that alum and introduce yourself and connect with them that way. Uh, but that jobs board is there and that's gonna differ a little bit uh, from the Purdue jobs board and from the CCO. So that's a great resource to use. And that same, the same thought, um, are there internship opportunities or research opportunities that students can get involved in um, now for starting the summer? Yeah, so this is the uh, a perfect time to think about summer research because uh, summer programs are, they're, they're starting to recruit during this time. And so um, what, what I recommend that there are two places that, that students can look for these summer programs. Uh, the first one is on our webpage, we have uh, a search opportunities page under our students tab. And so we have curated the summer programs at Purdue that students can apply to. And so uh, it has the deadlines, it has how much money they can make. Some of them can be very lucrative up to $6,000 a year. But then also by searching for summer research and then inserting keywords that they are interested in, they could potentially find programs at other universities. And so most of these deadlines are going to close at the end of the month and then go through mid-March. So this is the time to start thinking about what they would like to do during the summer. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to mention is uh, sometimes if they're looking for an industry research position, they may call it a research internship or they may use the word internship. Uh, but based on the, the, the job posting, uh, they may actually have a uh, undergraduate research experience similar to what they would do uh, on, in academia, but they're called an internship. Wonderful. So our next question is for um, Stephanie. And um, this may be more in your um, main role for student leadership, but what are some on-campus service opportunities for students? Yeah, absolutely. So by far, the one that I highly recommend is our ACE Campus Food Pantry. So we provide um, some baked goods and food, obviously, for our campus community. So anybody that has a Purdue ID. Um, and so that can be a service that your students take advantage of, but it's also something that's run by our student leaders. And so if you have a student that's looking to get involved, it's located here on campus in the Baptist Student Foundation. But if students are interested in getting involved, they can come by our office. We're in the Croc Leadership Center. Um, in room 336, so CROC is spelled K-R-A-C-H, if students are looking for us. Um, we're right across the street from the Co-Rec, and so that's a good landmark if they're not sure where we are. Um, and so the ACE Campus Food Pantry, we have volunteers all week, um, and we're always looking for new students to help uh, work with us. And so if students don't have access to transportation, it's a great place. Um, but we also have a number of community partners that are here locally that are pretty easy to access. 
And then we also have a number of different programs that we bring to campus. And so students are looking to get engaged with the community. Um, we're a good place to start um, so that they can find what their interests are and how they can connect. So happy to help them find that. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Stephanie. We have one last question to ask today um, and, and for sake of time. And I'm going to bring Allie back on screen. And um, the question from this parent was, what type of orientations are provided for student employees? It's a great question. And there are a number of different ones. Students will go through an orientation and onboarding for each area that they are hired. So for example, in our Purdue Dining and Culinary, they will start out with an orientation day and they will have a buddy system where they will get assigned where they're going to work and work through maybe a two week to a 30 day onboarding process. Other areas might not be as long of an onboarding process, but everybody goes through the initial hiring, um, which includes things like their I-9 and W-4 documentation. They also will come on site for example, at Recreation and Wellness, they actually do new, new hire orientation and what they call shadow shifts, where they're actually partnered with an existing student employee to learn the ropes. So again, it can be anywhere from a few days to a few weeks, but they typically also build in touch points to ensure that the students have gone through all of the pieces of their orientation at each job location. The other thing we do offer is we offer the opportunity for any student who wants to look for a job before they're hired to contact me and I can give them some details about how onboarding works once they have applied and been offered a position. So hopefully that helps answer the parent's question. Thank you so much. I want to give a big shout out to all of our panelists today. Thank you so much for all of your expertise that you have provided. Um, I do have one last thing for families is if you can give us some feedback. So um, on your screen, you're going to find a QR code and um, our contact information. So if you have any questions um, regarding this event or future events, please reach out to us. You can email us at parents at purdue.edu. Our, our telephone number is also listed on there, but that QR code will bring you to a survey about this event and maybe some future um, topics that you would like to see that maybe is not on our radar right now. So again, I'd like to thank all of our families for joining us and boiler up, hammer down, and hail Purdue.